Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Wednesday now, the first day of November 2023, also also known as the first day of the last month of the hurricane season. Big round of applause. We've made it through so far with not too much in the way of calamity. Adalia was the biggest event, generally speaking, on the Atlantic side. Of course, in the eastern Pacific, an entirely different story with Otis being a generational hurricane for sure. We're going to take a look at that. What does this mean about we are here? I'll explain that. And we'll take a look at the current situation out there, what we have brewing, what might be happening over the next several days and a few weeks to come. And then before you know it, November will be over and the season will be behind us. And we'll start looking ahead to next season. And we'll look at severe weather, winter storms, all that kind of stuff. We cover it all here at Hurricane Track. But it's still hurricane season for 29 more days. So let's see what we got. Well, now that we got the graphic by itself, let's see where we are. We're right here, November 1st. The bulk of the season now behind us. Everything in front of us. A nice, gentle slope towards, well, close to zero anyway. You never know. You get one of these rogue systems that develops, especially out in the subtropics where water temperatures can be warm enough with a very cold upper atmosphere. Sometimes you get hurricanes in the far north Atlantic, even in the off-season. Sort of a weird situation. But yes, most everything else already behind us. And so where are we? Where did we, you know, how's the season been? Well, let's look at the scorecard here from Colorado State University. North Atlantic, we had 20 storms, 99 named storm days. That's a lot. 64 is the norm. Right about average at 7 hurricanes, 31 hurricane days, a little bit more than the average. Right where we should be on major hurricanes. Let's just put a little star here. I'll try this could get changed upwards if in post-analysis one or two hurricanes are determined to have been majors this might get bumped up we shall see major hurricane days again right where we should be relatively speaking and the accumulated cyclone energy about 30 points higher than the long-term average now what about the east pack the northeast pacific less named storms but more ace 159, we'll call it 160 basically. But this is really telling right here. They had 10 hurricanes out that way and 8 major hurricanes. So half of the named storms were major hurricanes. A lot of them fairly short lived, relatively speaking. And yet the East Pack still squeaked out an A score of basically 160. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is why Ace is such an important metric for determining how a season was. You get a lot of name storms like we had in the Atlantic. Still had a pretty decent ace up there at 145. Some of the different long-term, long-lived term long storms attributed to that, obviously. I mean, think about Idalia made it up to Category 4, weakened very quickly before landfall, was very short-lived overall. But the East Pack, less name storms, half of them hurricanes, or major hurricanes, I should say, and we had an ace of about 160. So that's why ace is important. I'll put a link to this. It's a great resource in the description of today's video. All right, well, let's move along and see what we've got out there. Here's 97L. Now, this is not a done deal that nothing will happen, and I'll explain as we go further through today's update, and we'll get to that. Meanwhile, on the East Pack, this system's still out here, not for long, 0% now. So that's good. And then we've got Pilar, and just to make sure Pilar is behaving as we thought it would be, it is moving away. Only El Salvador now with a tropical storm. Watch Pilar forecast to move out into the open eastern Pacific and eventually dissipate out that way. Looking at everything on the satellite animation, this is kind of curious. A very large hole <laughs> moving across the Gulf of Mexico. I saw that when I was doing my prep work. And I thought i got to mention that, because that's just funny looking. It literally looks like a big hole down there moving across the Gulf. So who knows? Funny how dry air works. I'm sure lots of theories as to why that is there. So have at it, Internet and social media. Meanwhile, in the reality world, there's Pilar. Um, it's just funny thinking about that. There's Pilar. There's 97L. There is some energy there. And we got to watch, because... As we saw with Otis over here in the eastern Pacific, as it approached Acapulco, you only need, as, as if we needed reminding, right? 
24, even 12 hours, and a system can rapidly intensify. And some of the modeling is still holding on to that argument, if you will, that could, that could happen here with 97L as it approaches Central America over here. So we don't want to just write this off and ignore it. We certainly won't. And the folks at the Hurricane Center aren't, of course. And, I mean, what are you going to do if it does rapidly intensify? you got all the people over here, and they're not all going to get out of the way. But you at least got to be ready for it. And you see all this? That's rain and energy, and all of that's headed for Central America, regardless of how low the pressure might get or how high the winds are. That's still a lot of energy headed in that direction. So what looks like the, um, you know, what's going to happen over the next few days? Well, I broadened it out to show the entire Atlantic. There's Africa right there. Here's our storm up in the northeast Atlantic, Kieran, headed in towards the English Channel in the Bay of Biscay. And I'm going to show you a really interesting tweet from Fox Weather's Steve Bender in just a minute. And I've been seeing this often on Twitter crazy what's happening with the jet stream up that way we'll get to that there's our impulse that's 97l and there's tiny little pilar down there a very small vorticity center so this is the gfs 5,000 feet let's see what happens over the next few days not much with 97l it goes into central america with rain and squalls and that kind of thing we take this out to a week now we're out to november the 8th or so and there's just not much across the entire Atlantic, as you can clearly see. Nice and clean as we get through the first week of the hurricane season. Now, what does the Euro show? Well, luckily, pretty much the same thing. Not much over the next week or so. So, yes, this first full week of November shouldn't be too eventful in the tropics. But up here in the far latitudes, the northern latitudes, boy, that storm's uh, Kieran... Wow, that is something else. Just look at the giant nature of the overall cyclonic turning up here with these little impulses. Well, they're not little, but they look little on the map uh, as they come in. And boy, this is going to wreak havoc up there. Here's that tweet, though, from Steve Bender. I saw this last night, different people mentioning this over on Twitter. And this is just one example, Virgin Atlantic Airways, the speed. And I'm assuming that's the ground speed if you you know, equated it to ground speed, faster than the speed of sound, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, because it's riding that jet stream, and it just gives it a boost. You can almost fly for free, fuel-wise. Now, the, the the winds aren't that strong to keep an airplane afloat, but, uh, and I say afloat, the atmosphere is a fluid, but 784 miles per hour, that's incredible uh, as these planes go across the Atlantic and um, I guess that's just one benefit, at least. That's going to be a heck of a storm, though. Tomorrow's the day. We're going to see a lot of info about that on social media as Kieran comes into parts of Europe and the U.K. and vicinity. All right, so looking ahead, and currently, water temperatures are a big deal. They're a big part of the overall puzzle that we look at to determine what's going to happen with hurricane season, with other seasonal guidance and that makes a lot of sense because warmer water gives you more energy, more latent heat trapped, and so forth and so on. So as we've talked about, it certainly sounds like a broken record. I get it. All throughout the last almost year, well, we've got the El Nino out here. That's taken a few months to develop, but there it is. But this has been very prominent for the last almost year, the very warm Atlantic, and it's holding sway. And so what we will be looking for in the coming months, does this stay? And does this go away? And there is evidence to suggest that the El Nino in the Pacific will start to go away. Already seeing an erosion of the subsurface warmth. This is a cross section of this, by the way, like right through here. If you took a slice through it in the vertical, this is what you would get. So here's all your El Nino warmth at the surface. And down here in the East Pack, um, some subsurface cold is starting to emerge. Still a large area of subsurface, subsurface warmth generated by some westerly winds over in the West Pack. And, um, but I'm telling you, the modeling, we're going to look at this more and more as the month progresses and then into December and beyond. This will be something that we look at on a weekly basis to see how the ENSO evolves through the rest of the fall, the winter, and then into next spring 
and then of course how this evolves because if this stays put or even strengthens and then this diminishes and we had an ace of 145 this year I cannot imagine seriously what we're going to be facing next year and that's what we will be watching in the coming weeks and months as part of what we do in the off season here at Hurricane Track so we've done pretty good so far this year again a few impacts yes but all things considered especially when we look at what happened with Otis down in Acapulco the old adage it only takes one and they're going to be remembering that down there for probably more than a generation honestly quite a remarkable um, occurrence you know and it just goes to show as I mentioned already and you've seen it plenty of times on social you know uh, it can still happen even in 2023 that the modeling is not everything so anyway that's kind of a wrap up of what we've gone through already what we've been through we're on November 1st and that being said I think I'll do these videos just once a week I might have mentioned that earlier in today's update which is good I can finally get rid of this cold once and for all before the next one next Monday but I invite you to stick around don't use this as an opportunity to jump off of, uh, of YouTube and unsubscribe and miss everything that we do in the off season, especially that we've got something really exciting planned for next spring I'm gonna talk about that on patreon next week spring severe weather yeah wait till you see what we do next year in 2024 and then before you know it we will be talking about the 2024 hurricane season but we still have 29 days so we've made it this far hopefully we can get the rest of the way through without anything major happening between now and December 1st all right as always thanks for tuning in I do appreciate it all of us at hurricane track the big old family over here we appreciate your time and attention I'm Mark Suttoth I'll talk to you again a week from today